Helmholtz's theorem. This theorem states that a vector field, if it exists, is uniquely determined by its divergence and curl everywhere within a region and its normal component of the, on the closed surface surrounding that region. So we must have a region in which divergence and curl is known everywhere in this region and we should know the normal component on the closed surface surrounding that region. Okay, so let's uh, start with assuming that we have two vector fields V1 and V2. So assume that for the two vector fields V1 and V2 uh, the divergence of these two are the same so let's write divergence of uh, V1 divergence of vector field V1 is equal to the divergence of a vector field V2 and also their curls should be the same so curl of V1 is equal to curl of V2 and their com the normal components n hat dot v1 is equal to n hat dot v2. So if for a vector field its divergence and curl are known within a region and its normal component for the a surface that is at the boundary of this region, this vector is unique, that means V1 and V2 vector should be the same. So let's this, uh, define the difference W, which is V1 minus V2, so that we're going to have divergence of W is equal to zero. Why is that? Because it's divergence of uh, V1 minus divergence of V2. That's zero. And curl of W, the difference vector, curl of W is also zero because curl of V1 minus V2 will be curl of V1 minus curl of V2, which are the same. And furthermore, the normal component n hat dot w will be zero because it's n hat dot v1 minus v2, which are the same. This is going to be true on the surface at the boundary of the region where we have the curl and divergence written. Now, first of all, uh, let's start with the curl of W being zero, if the curl of this vector field W is zero, then going back to Stokes theorem, remember that if the curl of a vector field is zero, uh, then it can be written as minus the gradient of a scalar potential. So that means this uh, difference field W is minus gradient of a scalar potential minus gradient of phi by Stokes theorem. Okay. Uh, and if I write the closed surface integral 
d sigma dot phi gradient of phi This is equal to the volume integral d tau phi divergence of the gradient of phi Uh, plus the dot product of gradient of phi with itself, with the gradient of phi. So where does this come from? Going back to uh, Green's theorem, uh, let's see. We have uh, two forms, and this, this is the second form. d sigma dot u gradient of v is integral, volume integral d tau, gradient of u dot gradient of v plus u uh, del square v, where del square is divergence of the gradient, which is our Laplacian operator. Okay, uh, so this comes from... Green's theorem. Now, this uh, W is minus gradient of phi. So for gradient of phi, I can write uh, minus W. Then I'm going to get Closed surface integral minus d sigma dot phi w is equal to the volume integral for gradient of phi I'm substituting minus w, so this will be also minus d tau phi divergence of w minus W dot W, which is, uh, this is going to be minus W dot minus W, which is uh, plus W square. But if I put a minus sign here, then I have to put a minus sign here as well. So you can see that I have minus signs on both sides. So this is going to become plus. But we know that divergence of uh, W is zero. Okay, so that means this term is going to disappear. So that term is zero. All right, so we're left with the closed surface integral d sigma, uh, so we can take phi up front, phi d sigma dot w, 
This is equal to phi d sigma n hat dot w because we know that n hat dot w was zero so this part of the integral is also zero therefore so this part is equal to phi d sigma n hat dot w integrated over the surface over the surface s and because n hat dot w is zero uh, the left hand side is zero this is zero which means the, uh, the closed the volume integral d tau w dot product with w has to be equal to zero so what does that imply it implies that the volume integral d tau magnitude of w square is equal to zero so we find that if the magnitude of a vector squared is zero this means the vector itself is zero everywhere And that implies the two vector fields we started out with, V1 and V2, are equal to each other. And that completes the proof of Helmholtz's theorem. Okay, so Helmholtz's theorem states that a vector field is uniquely, uniquely de determined by its divergence and curl everywhere within a region, plus its normal component on the closed surface surrounding that region. So we have chosen two vector fields, V1 and V2, whose divergences are the same, curls are the same, and normal components are the same. We look at the difference vector, V1 minus V2, and looking at the divergence of W, it is zero, curl is zero, and n hat dot W is zero on the surface because of these properties. And the divergence and curl operations and dot product operations are distributive over the difference of V1 minus V2. Okay, so starting with curl of W is equal to zero, this implies that W can be written as minus the gradient of a scalar uh, function phi. This is according to Stokes theorem. And if I write the closed surface integral, d sigma dot phi gradient of phi, this is equal to the volume integral, d tau phi divergence of gradient of phi plus uh, gradient of phi dot product with gradient of phi. This is Green's theorem. So Green's theorem, uh, going back to Green's theorem here, this is the second form we're using. And uh, Stokes theorem, we have, if curl of V is zero, then V is minus the gradient of a scalar potential, which is which makes it a conservative field. Now, for gradient of phi in this equation, I'm substituting minus W. So this is going to be phi uh, minus W, so there's a minus sign here. D tau phi divergence of minus divergence of W, and then gradient of phi minus w dot product with minus w, but I, I have a minus sign here, so this should be minus. We know that divergence of w is equal to zero, so this term disappears. And d sigma dot w gives us the an, a compo normal component of w, which is zero everywhere, so this part is zero, which means the uh, integral v d tau w dot w is zero so w magnitude is zero which means w is identically zero everywhere that implies these two vectors v1 and v2 are the same therefore knowing the divergence curl and the normal component of this vector we have only one possible answer for the vector field